Greetings to the SAC COC on-site team. I'm David Shannon, president of Freed Hardeman University. We wish that you could be here in person, but since you can't, Caitlin Moore, one of our students, and I will be glad to show you around today. As we begin this tour, we're in the office of N.B. Hardeman, the president of Freed Hardeman University in 1908. And since that time, students have been coming to Freed Hardeman University, as a matter of fact, even well before that time. For 151 years, students have come here for higher education. Our faculty, staff, and administration, they have continued to fulfill the mission of Freed Hardeman University, which is to help students develop their God-given talents for His glory by empowering them with an education that integrates the Christian faith, scholarship, and service. Those three pillars of faith, scholarship, and service permeate even the usage of our buildings and campus here at Freed Hardeman University. When we consider the very building that we're in, the Hardeman House, we see that the usage benefits the students at Freed Hardeman. This is a perfect venue for smaller events like dinners, receptions, and even smaller weddings. As a matter of fact, the FHU Associates, they host the annual Victorian Tea Party here every year that raises thousands of dollars for Freed Hardeman University scholarship funds. As a matter of fact, all proceeds from this venue benefits and increases student scholarships. We're gonna take a quick walkthrough of the beautiful Hardeman house that was renovated just in the last year, and then we're gonna meet up with Caitlin. Hardeman University. My name is Caitlin and I'm a freshman majoring in theater and education. Today I want to show you around the campus I call my home away from home. Our next stop is Wallace Gano Dining Hall, better known as Gano. It offers a variety of different options. Enjoy a burger, soup and salad, or even a meal at our international line. Downstairs from the dining hall, you'll find the Burks Student Center, which includes the mail room, student service offices, the Office of Disability Services, student government offices, and the Lions Pride Snack Bar. you can grab an icy or Ben & Jerry's ice cream for an afternoon snack or a late night pick me up. The Cruz Colbert Activity Center contains two movie theaters, a coffee bar, and the Office of Student Life. Upstairs are two large meeting rooms that are used for numerous events and meetings including making music rehearsals, student government meetings, and classes. The Rogers Dodd Conger Clinic is operated through the services of a local physician complete with medical staff. It contains a reception area, laboratory, and three exam rooms with equipment to treat a variety of routine health problems.
Graduate admissions is housed in the Thomas Landon House that features a homey front porch that students love to use on a sunny day to study in quiet or for a chat in the evening. Inside, you'll find an elaborate staircase, walnut paneling, and period-style molding and fixtures. Upstairs is an attractive landing and five offices. Students purchase textbooks, school supplies, and FHU-themed clothing and memorabilia at the Pruitt Book Center. Downstairs, mail services processes incoming mail and packages daily. Clayton Chapel is a small, peaceful space that encourages spiritual contemplation. Students meet for a cappella singing here every Wednesday night during the regular semester. It has also been used for small weddings and photo shoots. The university operates four housing facilities for male students. Benson Hall was renovated in 2004 and can house up to 144 male students. Benson is full of life and fun, with each floor having its own little community. Benson's sweet style bathrooms were recently gutted and new ceramic tile showers were installed. Close to the center of campus, Benson is located near Lloyd Auditorium as well as the Sports Center. Farrah Hall was renovated in 2003 and houses up to 144 men. Farrah Hall is nestled between Brown Copal Business Center and Brewer Sports Center. Whether students are going to class or headed to the gym for a game of basketball, each is just a short walk away. In recent years, Farrah's community-style bathrooms received all new ceramic tile showers, stall dividers, lighting, and plumbing. Sewell Hall is the university's newest residence hall and houses up to 200 men. Sewell is the newest dorm on campus with recently repainted suite-style rooms. It features a quiet study room and activities room on the second floor, which also contains lounge furniture, plasma TV, pool tables, and a fully equipped kitchen. Woods East features apartment-style housing for 48 senior male students. Each unit contains four bedrooms, two bathrooms, as well as a kitchen and living area. Built in 1922, Hall Roland Hall is the oldest housing facility on campus. It has the look and feel of a classic college space with the warmth of an old home. Each window offers a unique view of the university. This dorm has space for 70 female students. Dixon Hall holds 128 women residents. Recently, Dixon received new hardwood floors, carpet, freshly painted walls, and updated bathrooms with LED lighting and ceramic tile showers. Located in the heart of campus, Dixon Hall offers easy access to the new Barbara Shull Academic Resource Center and the shortest walk to classes. Scott Hall provides housing for 146 ladies. Scott Hall is best known for its spacious lobby, large kitchen, and accessible parking. Located close to downtown Henderson, Scott is a short walk to Main Street's Wi-Fi Park, a popular coffee shop, and several other local shops. 
Each of Scott's sweet style bathrooms recently received new vanities and mirrors. Bradfield has the largest rooms on campus. This dorm features large community bathrooms to accommodate 144 female students. These newly renovated community bathrooms contain ceramic tile showers, new flooring, and updated vanities. Porter Terry houses 154 female students. This dormitory has a living room area in each suite. This living space serves as a perfect place for residents to study or socialize. In recent years, Porter Terry has obtained new flooring and air conditioning units. Tyler Residence Hall features apartment style housing for 48 senior female students. Each unit contains four bedrooms, two baths, as well as a kitchen and living area. In the Brewer Sports Center are two gyms, a walking track, locker rooms for men, women, sports teams, as well as staff. Weight rooms. Three racquetball courts. a reception area, and nine staff offices. It also features the Sports Hall of Fame room. This room is attached to a kitchen that's used for various meetings, luncheons, and receptions. Students can participate in intramural sports and cheer on the Lions as they compete against nationally ranked teams. Throughout the year, students use Vader Green for a variety of different events concerts and campus-wide movies, to social club mixers and frisbee tournaments. There's never a dull moment here. <laughs> this is the Black Box Theater where shows come to life. There are about four to five shows here each semester and the small confined space makes it so much easier for audiences to engage during each performance, like The Yellow Wallpaper, Alice, and The Drowning Girls. The theater house contains two faculty offices. Theater majors and performers use the front and back porches, the living room, the dining room, and kitchen for practice, creative brainstorming, playing games, and planning for upcoming performances. Built in 1930, this historic building was renovated in 2017 and 2018 to house the music program. 
The building includes sound controlled practice rooms, offices, classrooms, and an open space recital hall. This building showcases original hardwood flooring and brickwork that adds to the acoustical clarity. Built in 2007, the Bullioner Clayton Visual Arts Center is the hub of visual creativity on campus. Aside from several classrooms, there is studio space, a workshop, faculty offices, and a gallery that showcases the work of our students and faculty as well as visiting artists. In case you are thinking that all of our students do is eat, sleep, and play, let's join Caitlin over in the ARC, where students, faculty, and staff engage in service projects, scholarship, and yes, also some playing. Located at the center of campus is the Hope Barber Shoal Academic Resource Center. We call it the ARC. It's the hub of academic and social activity. Let's go inside. Here on the third floor, we have free tutoring and supplemental instruction. Here on the quiet floor, you'll find study rooms, university archives, and books. Lots of books. Here on the first floor, you can get refreshments at Starbucks while hanging out with your friends, playing games, or preparing for your next test. The Gardner Center houses our Bible education and photography programs. Here you can dig deeper into scripture, learn how to engage a classroom, and design a photo set all in one place. The lower floor of the Gardner Center houses the College of Education that offers a number of undergraduate and graduate programs. On this floor, you'll find three classrooms, one of which is a computer lab and two conference rooms, 12 faculty offices, and two reception areas. There's also a large multi-purpose room that is used for small, informal classes, luncheons, and meetings. Across the hall is a full kitchen Part of the FHU Library, the Learning Resource Library, provides books and resources to students in the College of Education. It houses the university's juvenile collection that has a circulation of over 3,000 books each year.
Joy Simon McDaniel House is a historic home that was ordered out of a Sears and Roebuck catalog. It's home to our Honors College and Study Abroad program. The Honors College area in this building contains a large conference room that is used for small interactive classes, honors thesis defenses, and honors council meetings. Upstairs, we find faculty offices of the Department of History, Philosophy, and Political Sciences. Science Center is the newest academic building on campus. Graduate school acceptance rates for our science programs range from an impressive 90 to 100 percent. So whether you want to be a doctor, a pharmacist, a veterinarian, or other medical professional, you'll be well prepared. The Brown Copel Business Center is the largest academic building on campus. Here, students can take a variety of different classes like sports marketing, digital forensics, and diversity in America. There are usually 15 to 30 students in a class. That means that our professors can invest in the academic, spiritual, and social success of each student. At FHU, students have opportunities to gain practical experience. For example, this is where students on the first bank investment team manage a real $1 million stock portfolio. The Associate Science Center houses the nursing program, human anatomy, physiology labs, biology labs, the Associate Lecture Hall, which seats 84 people and faculty offices. Our tour continues in Fried Hardman's oldest academic building, the Old Main Administration Building. Completed in 1908 and restored in 2019, this building serves as a place where Fried Hardman students can study, socialize, and worship. Come on, let's go upstairs. I want to show you Chapel Hall. It has the best acoustics of any room on campus. From chorale rehearsals to devotionals, there's no better place to sing. In addition to being an historical treasure, Old Main houses the Department of Communication, which includes English, Spanish, and Communication. The Department of Behavioral Science offers a number of programs, including criminal justice and psychology and the Doctorate of Behavioral Health. The department makes use of office space, graduate student offices, and counseling labs in the building. Off the Grand Lobby is the Faculty Commons, where faculty meet for the informal 
interchange about creative and scholarly ideas. This is a great place for a cup of coffee after a day in the classroom. Hardeman's biggest events throughout the year, including chapel, the benefit dinner, and making music. The Office of Academics sets the standards of scholarly excellence here at Fried Hardeman University. As a matter of fact, all academic standards and policies funnel through this office. This suite of offices on the main level of Lloyd Auditorium contains the office of our Provost and Vice President of Academics, as well as other administrators, an administrative assistant, as well as a conference area. It's very functional and usable. We're right next to Lloyd Auditorium. Let's go see it. It may be hard to imagine that this vast space is filled with students and faculty every day of our regular semester, Monday through Friday at 1030 for Daily Chapel. Let's conclude in the President's Suite that's just attached to this auditorium. The rich heritage of Freed Hardeman University began with leadership such as N.B. Hardeman back in the early 1900s, and it has continued with faculty and staff and administrators today that engage students with the opportunity to fulfill the mission of Freed Hardeman University by empowering students to develop their God-given talents, by empowering them with an education that integrates the Christian faith, scholarship, and service. Our facilities engage in this opportunity on a regular basis. For example, each spring break we can see students leaving the Gardner Center and going on spring break trips where they serve mankind. We also can see on Wednesday evenings, late in the evening, we'll see students go into the Clayton Chapel for a late night singing where their faith is nurtured and grown. We also see academic goals and scholarship fueled every day in classrooms across this campus, whether it be in the Brown Copel Business Center, the Anderson Science Center, or the Old Main Administrative Building, as well as the Associate Science Center, and any other buildings across this campus where classes meet. 
We hope that you have seen that there is a fine mixture of old and new resources that are used to help students fulfill their dreams and their careers and grow their faith. We are able through these facilities to provide what students need. We wish that we could have visited with you in person, but it's an honor to visit with you today across our campus in this particular way. If you're ever in West Tennessee, just between Memphis and Nashville, stop in and see us. We would love to meet you in person and show you around.